वेलकम टू इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रहेंसिव लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म बाय जूस एग्जाम प्रेम इन दिस इवनिंग वी ऑल हैव गैदर टूगेदर टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन इंडस्ट्रियल इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन दैट इज लेवल मेजरमेंट ऑफकोर्स वी आर इन द लास्ट लेक्चर ऑफ दिस ग्रेट मानसून स्पेशल सीरीज अप टू नाउ आई हैव डिस्कस्ड several concepts related to the pressure measurement not only the pressure measurement i have equally discussed so many concepts in the level measurement also many times i have correlated both the variables that is level as well as pressure vicky gola good evening so in this lecture as i promised in the previous lecture we will going to discuss two more interesting techniques to measure the level of the liquid in the container one among that is going to be the displacer and the second one is a hall sensor probably for many students these two techniques are very new so let us discuss each and every topic from the very very fundamentals i request only one thing from your side have patience till the end be with me till the end i am sure you will enjoy not only enjoying you will definitely get better concept in these two topics well before going to the actual discussion let me introduce myself myself panindra and for the students who are already associated with me they are very much aware of me but the students who are new to the class they should know about myself so my name is panindra as i said all put together i have teaching experience of 12 plus years so far i have guided more than 50000 students in the subjects of control system industrial instrumentation and circuit theory and even measurements also and of course i am specially known for the industrial instrumentation now before going to the actual discussion of today's session i would like to give the schedule what was happened in the previous lecture so that if any one of you miss any of the lectures related to pressure and measure i mean level measurement you all can go through the previous lectures yes our monsoon special series started with the first lecture on the pressure the pressure measurement one i have discussed about the barometer not only the barometer i have also discussed some other few uh, concepts like piezometer and all and in the second lecture i have explained the concepts of the low pressure gauges like pirani gauge and thermocouple gauge we have discussed and in the third lecture on the pressure measurement i have clearly explained the maclod gauge and differential pressure transmitter basics and in the level measurement one i have explained so many techniques to measure the level in the container and there i have explained one more important concept called differential pressure gauge as well as differential pressure transmitter and as you all know in the very previous lecture we have discussed about ultrasonic techniques as well as echo based techniques and i have also discussed about the radiation technique and many students usually they have the confusion between the ultrasonic techniques and radiation technique i hope in yesterday class i have cleared all possible doubts from your side and in fact i have explained in so detailed manner with the great patience correct so let me wish all the students who are here yes navin kumar hi <laughs> good evening deepak rawat good evening kaushika good evening shivani good evening well this is the last lecture so i am expecting maximum number of students for this live so that again and again you don't disturb me in the telegram group of course the shivani and other people they have asked for the pdf of the ppt or else you know any of the material i have shared those students who sincerely require the ppt or pdf you can message me separately i am ready to share i have already got the permission so i will going to share that to you okay good evening sridhar well good evening madhuri <coughs> right so this is all about my schedule and in this lecture as i said we will going to discuss about the displacer as well as hall sensor and those who want to speak with me you can directly contact with me because i am not so much fascinated to be in the uh, facebook here and there so directly call to me and ask whatever the doubts you have instantaneously your doubts will be clarified if i am so clear about the concept okay and follow to that this is my mail id if you want to send any questions or anything you want to speak you can even connect through the mail id also right so let's get into the today topic that is displacer right so anyway as i said we will going to discuss about displacer follow to that we will also discuss about hall sensor and then we will discuss about some of the psu and gate level questions and most importantly during the discussion when i am explaining the concepts naturally i will going to discuss here and there the interview level questions so you need not to expect the interview questions separately in the discussion of the concepts itself i will going to put the interview questions that is how i have been teaching from the last six lectures and you have also faced one of the wonderful questions right some of the wonderful questions clear <laughs> right isha agarwal good evening hari pratap good evening 
right deepak i will send you yes so whoever want the notes or material or as ppt you can message me i am ready to share however i sincerely request every one of you be there in the live till the end of the session as i was saying live is more important than ppt and pdf okay right so let's move on to the topic without wasting the time yes so we need to discuss about the concept of displacer but before going to the concept of displacer please let me know do you have any idea of the displacer or not okay let me see starting from navin kaushika and shivani isha agrawal please let me know do you have any idea of the displacer if you have yes you have idea then i will start from little bit high otherwise i will pre assume that i need to discuss from the very much fundamentals so it may take 5 to 10 minutes extra but i am very sure you will live the subject here right so should i start from the basics everyone please respond in the comment box should i respond i mean should i start from the basics or not <laughs> see of course the answer is very simple even if you ask me to start from the basics or even yes first time you are here in this okay then fine let's start the discussion from the very very fundamentals because i feel that most of the students haven't uh, gone through the concept of displacer so let's start from the basics so the basic idea of the displacer or the displacer works on the principle in fact archimedes principle i pre assume that uh, many of you have the idea of the archimedes principle okay if you don't have the idea of archimedes principle no need to worry about that so just follow me till the end of the session not in, even till the end of the session just 5 minutes if you wait you will understand that because this is very simple okay suppose let us assume that we have a container we have a container inside the container we have water okay so let's consider that this is water for example i can say this is some kind of liquid here better you can consider this as a water for time being okay so this is water right so now suppose if i ask a question to you for example let us take this cube this is somewhat a solid cube i can say so let me say this might be a solid cube here clear solid cube for example suppose if i take this solid cube outside here so let's consider that this is a solid cube all the way here right <laughs> so all of you can see of course my handwriting might not be so good but you people can understand this right so this is a solid cube i have taken out of this right so this is only solid cube which is placed in the air which is placed in the air so if i ask a question to you what is the value of this solid cube or uh, weight of this solid cube for example if i say in a very very simple language not in the difficult language let me use very simple language for example if i say length is l and the height is l and even the width is l all the way so length height width everything it is l then what is the volume of the cube here so i can say all put together volume of cube here it would be equal to how much l cube right so of course the unit will be in meter cube clear so for, from the basics very good very good so as i said the volume of the cube is equal to l cube number 1 what would be the weight of this one can you tell me what is the weight of this one we all know that if it is placed in the air obviously the weight acts in the downward direction so the weight can be written here as equal to <coughs> weight is equal to mass into gravity correct so acceleration due to the gravity m into g is considered as a weight so this is called as a actual weight of the body here okay so i can write down this is a actual weight so for example if i write this might be the actual weight of the body now many of you might be thinking about this isn't it right sir what is this sir you told that level measurement and you are about to discuss displacer how come the archimedes principle came here so you all know about me right if there is no importance of this particular topic in our further discussion probably i will not discuss this correct i might not started discussing this so converse is also true that means if i am started to discuss some concept definitely there is a importance of that concept in the further discussion okay so volume of the cube is l cube and we have seen that the actual weight is mg right now i want to ask a question for example if i say by any means if i say this is having the weight is a uh, weight of 2 kg for example assume that this has a weight of 2 kg now the question is if i take this and if i keep inside the water whether the net weight will be more than 2 kg or less than 2 kg answer in the chat box here everyone must answer this if i take this cube solid cube and if i dip that partially in the water partially in the water if i dip whether the net weight will be less or more this is what i need 
less weight will be less or more <coughs> any one of you all of you less so this is common sense right so that's why whenever you are in the swimming pool right you feel that your weight is lost right so because the net weight will going to be less than the actual weight clear so why does it will happen why the actual weight is different from the net weight here so that means when you keep a body in the uh, water or else even if you are uh, dipping or if you are swimming in the pool if you are under the water your weight will be very less compared to your actual weight in the air right so why does it will be less so that is the question so the answer is very simple when you dip the solid cube here we all know that naturally the weight will be acting in the downward direction nobody has a question related to this let me say this is the force because of the weight and this is considered as a mass into gravity clear so mass into gravity right so but at the same time uh, you must understand that on this particular i repeat on this particular cube there is another force which will be acting in the upward direction and this is considered as a buoyancy force clear so this is considered as a buoyancy force of course somebody has given the idea here so let me write down this as a buoyancy force here so and this buoyancy force is very much useful even in the level measurement and you will be really surprised to see how it will be used in the level measurement so don't worry about that now the buoyancy force is acting in the upward direction the question is how do we calculate the net weight now that is the question right so let us assume that this is completely filled here so let us assume that the tank is having more height here right so let's assume that the tank is having more height and of course this is completely filled completely filled means now the solid cube is inside the water here correct now can you tell me how do we calculate the net weight here any one of you so i will be very happy if if you get the i mean if you uh, give me the answer so that that will really give a lot of energy to me to explain in further discussion so every one of you should participate in the discussion because today is the last lecture of our great mamsu special series unless until you few request for more number of sections from me if you request for more number of sections naturally we will come up with the more and more sections okay so please see how do we calculate the net weight now now the net weight can be written as in a simple language look at that net weight can be written as equal to so usually if it is inside the water i can say net weight is equal to f w that means the actual weight minus apparent weight right so uh, buoyancy force so let me write down this as a buoyancy force here clear so the net weight is equal to actual weight minus buoyancy force now the question is how do we calculate the actual weight actual weight is known to you right so how do we calculate that actual weight is equal to mass of the cube into acceleration due to the gravity and this mass can be written as any one of you can you tell me how to write the mass here oh very good very good madhuri very good excellent how do we write the mass of the cube here so mass can be written as the density of the cube let me write down mc that is the mass of the cube density of the cube here the rho c means the density of the cube and so mass is equal to density into volume here so this is very easy isn't it because we know that density density is equal to mass per volume so if you want mass then we have to multiply this with the volume of the cube here so please note down that this is the density of the cube and this is the volume of the cube and it must be multiplied by the gravitational constant i mean that is acceleration due to gravity this is considered as a actual weight of the body now how do we calculate the buoyancy force here so the buoyancy force is actually nothing but the weight of the water that is displaced because of the volume of the cube right so it is very interesting now when we uh, when we keep the cube or the solid cube inside the water because of that solid cube some amount of the water gets displaced so that means the amount of the volume or the weight of the volume of the liquid that is displaced because of this solid cube is considered as a buoyancy force or buoyancy force clear so how do we calculate that one so that means the mass of the fluid that is actually displaced here so let me write down that is mass of the fluid as f here so better is i will use the liquid so that there is no confusion otherwise again shivani will come up with the question what will happen if i have the air here okay so <coughs> let me uh, write down this one so this is mass of the liquid into gravitational force correct so but when you are writing this weight especially mass of the liquid so naturally you will write down here density of the liquid but when you are multiplying this with the volume of the liquid you should not multiply with the complete volume of the liquid you should only multiply with the volume displaced by the or volume uh, 
taken out because of the cube. Now you have seen that the cube is completely in the water. As the cube is com completely in the water, the amount of the volume that is displaced by this cube is equal to the volume of the cube itself, correct? So that means here, wherever you are writing volume of the liquid here, basically that is not the complete volume, it is just the volume of the liquid that is displaced because of the cube here. So therefore, we will be writing this only and we have to multiply this with the g here. Clear? So now, when I ask you a question at last, what would be the net weight now? So this is very interesting, right? So the net weight must be equal to Fw minus Fb. Now Fw is known to you and Fb is known to you, right? So what should I say? Now volume of the cube into acceleration due to gravity, you have to take it outside. Then it will become obviously <coughs> The density of the cube minus density of the liquid this is exactly what we are going to find the net weight here clear so is it clear so far <laughs> every one of you is it clear so far or not right so if it is clear so far please let me know yes yes something kind of same like rotometer only but we will use a different idea here so please be with me till the end okay net weight is equal to vc into g inside the bracket density of the what cube c stands for cube and l stands for liquid why i have explained this much concept is the only idea is to say that net weight definitely it will be less than actual weight clear so net weight will be less than actual weight clear so this is the first thing <coughs> net weight will be less than actual weight and more importantly the buoyancy force when you look at this one the buoyancy force if you see it depends upon the density of the liquid in which the solid cube is present and apart from that, it also depends on the density of the liquid that is displaced because of the volume of the cube, right? As complete cube is inside the water, we have made this as Vc. Suppose if it is a partially immersed here, suppose let us take here, <coughs> let us take in this way. Now I will understand how many of you really got the idea here. Suppose if I say it is partially immersed here, right? Maybe uh, you can consider this for time being like, you know it is having the height h here clear so height h here then can you tell me what would be the volume of the water that is displaced now now the volume of the uh, water that is displaced will not be equal to l cube here it will not be equal to l cube why only h is the height that is actually displaced here so therefore now the volume could be written as clearly so please see you should not use the complete volume of the cube here so rather i will be writing this as a vc dash here so this could be written here now as uh, L into L because this is the length and width both the dimensions are L and L but the height is H here clear so height is H now have you understood somehow we got the value of H in the volume of this one correct in the volume of this one so naturally how do we write this one now so then the net weight would be written as FW as I said this is rho C right and vc is going to be l cube here into g here correct and whereas this could be written as buoyancy force is how much so minus wherever buoyancy force is there that could be written as rho l into volume of the liquid that is displaced because of the volume of the cube here now what is the volume of the cube that is there in the water right now because it is partially there in the water correct so therefore it would be written as l square into h here clear l square into h so that means i can say more or less the net weight is the function of what net weight is actually the function of look at the beauty of this net weight is a function of h value clear and h is considered as a water level provided that if this uh, cube is touching the bottom here correct or wrong is it interesting or not so finally we come to know something is related to h that is net weight clear so let us try to go deeply into the topic because I have explained so far about the principle by taking a lot of time because I know how much important this topic in the later session. So is it clear so far? Every one of you must answer here. Right. So moving ahead to the next level. So let me take a simple experiment and show it to you to the everyone. So please be with me till the end. Suppose let us say working of weight measuring instrument. Assume that we have here weight gaze. So let us say this is called as a weight gaze don't ask me how do we measure this one but because i pre assume that you people are clear in this right otherwise i will discuss about this how do we measure the weight case so this is going to indicate the weight right for example if i say this is going to be zero here so for time being let me call this is a zero here and 
let us consider that this is a maximum weight so this is a maximum weight clear now you see we don't have any water here so in fact in this particular case in the first case it is empty here <laughs> right so this is empty now as it is empty here what would be the weight acting on this gauge now is it maximum or minimum case one maximum weight will act in the downward direction or uh, you know uh, minimum weight will act in the downward direction so if you look at the actual weight will act in the downward direction the reason is there is no liquid inside the container here so you can see here this is called as a container here i can say clearly that this is called as a container right so as there is no liquid here i can say this is full weight will be acting in the downward direction so therefore the gaze will going to almost record the maximum weight here clear so suppose if i say for example if i call this as like 2 kg here that is the maximum weight so if it is indicating 2 kg weight here according to calibration i can say there is no water inside the tank so let me take this as a 0 meter or 0 centimeter whatever it may be right so better let me take 0 centimeter here now uh, or as 0 meter in case 2 we have seen that the partial water is there or else the rod we can say the rod right <laughs> so let me call this as a cylindrical rod here now the rod is partially immersed here so when the rod is partially immersed here we all know that what will be the net weight now here so can you tell me what is the net weight here now net weight again it will act in the downward direction only right net weight will be acting in the downward direction but if you look at the overall net weight here so this net weight what will be the net weight now net weight will be equal to the actual weight that is fw minus the buoyancy force here correct so let me write down buoyancy force so i am very sure that in the second case the overall weight or the net weight of this cylindrical rod is less compared to the first case correct compared to the first case that's why if you see it is not actually at the zero it is not actually at the maximum here right so if i say clearly that this is at zero and this is at maximum now you can see this is actually at some other point here the reading is somewhere here in the middle right now you see the other side of the story right so in the third case i am very clear that see it is fully immersed here right so as it is fully immersed here so what should i say if i say the net force which is acting in the downward direction in this case net weight will be equal to right so net weight will be equal to again that should be written as fw minus fb right so let me take this as a fb2 here right fb2 here and let me say this is fb3 here clear fb3 here right so in case here because the first case buoyancy force is equal to zero because there is no water so in the first case it will be considered as zero newton now you tell me in the third case overall net weight will be less or more sir sometimes i did not understand english sir like displacer definition i didn't understand sir can you explain in the uh <coughs> deepak i'm extremely sorry so i will repeat in a very very simple language but i haven't explained the definition of displacer still i am just explaining only the concept okay so once it is done let me try to speak in hindi because i am not so good in the hindi only uh, thoda thoda baat kar raha hai so i will be able to speak only little bit okay little bit so the actual net weight in the third case you all can see that is equal to fw minus fb3 right so what is the condition here net weight in the third case is more or less so try to answer okay sir no issue thank you deepak thank you very much for understanding so in the third case net weight is more or less compared to the second case anyone very easy right in the third case i can say net weight is actually less compared to the second case because the water is more so therefore i can say the buoyancy force in the third case is greater than the buoyancy force in the second case clear so therefore i can say logically that the net weight in the second case so in fact it is greater than first one right so now if you see the net weight <coughs> right in case 3 obviously it would be less than net weight in the second case and it would be less compared to the first case clear it would be less compared to the first case so what should i say here so the logically that's why if you look at the gauge here so what is the indication so if you look at it is almost indicating the minimum value here clear so can i say like this if the water level increases what is the relation between weight and water level if the water level is increasing i repeat if the water level is increasing then the net weight will going to decrease clear 
I repeat, sir, speak Hindi as much we speak in. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Vicky, you were right. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> right. So you must understand this in a very simple way. That is, if the water level increases, then the net weight will go into decrease. Simple. So the more and more the water level, the gaze will go into rotate in the minimum side. Very, very simple. So the calibration shows that if the tank is empty, this will be at the maximum, needle will be at the maximum. If the tank is full, this will be taken as zero here. Clear? So that is how we will going to decide here. Understood? So I have explained. In fact, this is the fundamental concept of a displacer. Displacer means basically the cylindrical rod will going to displace the volume of the water or water inside the tank. Because of that, the gaze will show some reading. That's it. Clear? Nothing else. Displacer means it's a device which displaces the quantity of the liquid in the container to measure the water level. That's why it is called as a uh, displacer. Now, let's move ahead to the actual structure because so far I have explained, you know, so the basic idea of this, but you all are engineers, right? So, you require the actual construction of this, right? So, this is the physics class. Even the people who are uh, 10th standard, they can understand this. Now, let's move on to the actual setup here see we have a closed vessel here so straight away i must say that this is a closed tank clear so closed <laughs> tank here right so these things are very important yesterday i told you why these things are very important because many times you will be asked the question on this topic okay so it's a closed tank in fact it is a closed vessel where we have a process fluid like this and all of you can see maybe the process fluid all the way so first of all let us take one second right uh, so this is almost considered here as a zero meter here so you must consider this point as a zero meter here clear so let us consider this as a zero centimeter otherwise zero meter or zero centimeter now you can see parallel to this container we have a small chamber uh, which is called as a displacer case here and this cylindrical rod is actually called as a displacer i am repeating this one this can be considered as a float or you can consider this as a cylinder okay but basically this cylinder is called as a displacer why it will displace the liquid now the question is what happens here is for example for example if this is a level we consider this as a zero centimeter here right so zero centimeter everywhere up to here everywhere it is considered as a zero centimeter only now right so assume a situation that if there is no water here above this one then there is no water here correct there is no water as it is 0 centimeter here, I will consider right now that the tank is empty here. Clear? Tank is empty here. Now, have you seen other devices here? Other elements? It is very important because I just told you only the container as well as the displacer. There are some valves here. So, it is considered as a block wall and this is considered as a, another valve here. And the nozzle means there are pipes which are going to connect the container with the displacer case and more importantly so the displacer thread so you can see there is a thread here and the thread is connected to the weight measuring mechanism there are two ways in a simple way you can take this rod and connect to the weight measuring system or else connect to the spring and the spring can be connected to a you know lvdt suppose let us say for example if you have so the displacer rod like this clear so what we do is we will connect this to the spring here clear and maybe this is connected to the float of the LVDT here. So let us consider that this is, uh, you know, core of the LVDT. So the core of LVDT is connected exactly to the spring here. Clear? So now we will be having clearly like a LVDT primary coil like this. And there might be uh, two secondary coils for the LVDT here. And as you know, this is series opposition connection. And we will be taking the voltage across this one. Clear? So this we will going to get voltage here. So what will going to happen here? Suppose, depending upon the weight here, so all of you please try to understand this. So, this is the cylinder here, correct? For us, it is a cylinder, right? So, by chance, if the cylinder weight is more, if the cylinder weight is more, right? So, if the weight is more, and I am very sure that the spring will stretch in the downward direction. When the spring stretches in the downward direction, the core will going to move in the downward direction, clear? That time, you will get some voltage here, correct? Even you can use the potentiometer also. 
that would be the best choice you can connect the spring directly to the wiper of the potentiometer correct instead of lvdt because as we have a small displacement i went with the lvdt here so if the core displaces the voltage will go into change suppose in the similar way if at all it moves in the upward direction then what can i say when it is moving in the upward direction the spring has to move compress in the upward direction so therefore the lvdt core or the core if we have to move in the upward direction then the voltage will be different here so the best part is instead of using lvdt for better understanding my suggestion is let us go with the wiper here okay so because there will be some students they may get confusion here so let us consider in a simple way that <coughs> for example i have taken this cylinder end and connected to the wiper here so for example let me take here and connect it to the wiper here right so the idea is so simple now so here we are going to have the potentiometer like this right and here let's take the uh, voltage source here plus and minus here vs clear so now tell me what will going to happen so by chance if at all if the displacer is coming down right if the displacer is coming down then the wiper will move in the downward direction when the diaper wiper uh, moves in the downward direction then the voltage across the wiper will be less suppose if the weight is moving in the upward direction right so if the weight is less then obviously the cylinder will be moving in the upward direction then obviously the wiper will be in the, in the upward direction then the voltage across the wiper will be high clear so this is exactly the way how the weight can change the position of the wiper i repeat how the weight can change the position of the wiper on the potentiometer we all are very clear and we are very clear about the potentiometer right when the wiper changes its position on the metal film of the potentiometer the voltage will go into change correct so that means weight will change if in any case if the weight changes then the position of the wiper on the potentiometer changes then the output voltage will change clear so therefore this total will be considered now as a weight measuring instrument clear so the weight measuring instrument now you tell me whether all of you are clear up to here or not so every one of you every one of you i will see your response then only i will move forward i want the answer from everyone everyone rashekar vicky gola shivani deepak kaushika madhuri everyone every one of you <laughs> so yes 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 one minute right so is it clear or not is yes, clear right so it's very simple actually you people can easily understand right so <coughs> now let us move on this so here after if i say weight measuring mechanism either you can consider simply like a weighing gas or else if you want to convert into voltage then you can consider this potentiometer or lvdt technique because once we are able to get the output as a voltage then the voltage can be converted to current by using voltage to current converter ultimately you will be getting the standard current range of 4 milliampere to 20 milliampere so why we don't use this in industrial instrumentation is in industries especially in process industries we will be uh, actually having the tank at very remote place right and the displacer will be there in the uh, you know tank so engineer cannot go to the field place and check what is the level so once the displacer measure the level it has to send the current signal 4 milliampere to 20 milliampere that signal will be passed to the control room clear that's why obviously in every application being an instrumentation engineer we need to convert every variable to the standard current range of 4 milliampere to 20 milliampere clear so that's why we don't use this we will use the transmitter which uh, which generates the 4 milliampere to 20 milliampere standard range now let's start our game here so suppose tank is empty means what water level is equal to 0 meter so that means if there is no water technically don't consider this fluid here please don't consider this one this is the mistake in the diagram don't consider the fluid here so just assume that the tank is up to here so there is no fluid here means there is no fluid here right if there is no fluid here i can say the total net weight is equal to what net weight is equal to net weight is equal to actual weight right so actual weight now i want the answer from your side what is the actual weight of this one <laughs> this is a good question what is the actual weight so the actual weight could be written clearly as equal to so <coughs> uh the mass of this displacer here so let us say this as a float for some time being okay let me call this as a float because 
it may float right so otherwise you can consider directly displacer itself that would be more appropriate so let us consider this as a displacer itself so then i can say clearly that so mass of the displacer that is right <laughs> actual weight means mass of the displacer into acceleration due to the gravity clear that is g so how do we write the mass of the displacer mass of the displacer is the density of the displacer that is rho d density of the displacer very good madhuri so and then volume of the displacer into g so volume of the displacer means complete volume complete volume i am saying so suppose if i say the length of the displacer from here to here let me call this as l here clear and you all can see clearly that this is a, a cylindrical rod here so this is a cylindrical rod here correct this is a cylindrical rod and assume that this has a radius of r so if it is having a radius of r then what is the volume of the cylinder here first of all the density of the displacer and the complete volume of the cylinder means pi <coughs> pi into r square into l that is the volume of the displacer complete volume of the displacer into acceleration due to gravity clear easy so far all of you please let me know clear up to here or not so this is the net weight when there is no liquid i can say clear so the net weight let me call this as equation one for time being clear this is very very important so pi is you know pi value r is nothing but the radius of the cylindrical okay cylinder and l is nothing but the total height of the cylinder total height or the actual height of the cylinder here clear and g is the acceleration due to gravity as you all know that right so now moving ahead to the next thing that is if at all there is a water level suppose let us say as i said this is zero centimeter here right let us consider up to here it is the water level is height h here clear water level height h then i can show you that this is l uh, h here then as i said from here to here right so we need to open this walls then only uh, when we open this walls clearly then we will be able to maintain the same level here and same level because height decides the pressure correct so when the height decides the pressure when the height decides the pressure without the volume or without you know the volume of the container and the volume of the displacer the level here and the level here both will be same clear the level here will be same here clear now tell me in this situation focus only on the displacer gaze and tell me what would be the net weight that is acting here clear so i am saying that net weight in the second case every one of you let me see how many of you really understood this so that means now the water level is not equal to zero meter first of all so it's so clear so when the water level is not zero in the second case what would be the net weight here so the net weight as i was saying again and again that net weight in this case could be written clearly as the actual weight of this minus buoyancy force so let me write down this as a buoyancy force here now you must be very careful with this one what is the net weight here so the net weight could be written here as already you know net weight is nothing but the actual weight and that will be when the water level is zero meter right so we have seen that that is equal to the density of the displacer into pi into r square specially into total length into g clear simple very simple right so minus what about buoyancy force deepak are you following or not otherwise i should learn hindi in 30 minutes i mean 30 days and then i have to come back again for you okay deepak today's session is you you are the hero of today's session are you following or should i slow down the face i need to see your comment i think rest of people are okay fine shivani is saying good okay kaushika is good yes yes deepak is saying yes so we can go forward now so what is the buoyancy force here now the buoyancy force when we are writing i told you that you must use the density of the liquid first of all correct and then the volume of the displacer that is immersed the volume of the displacer that is in the water because it is partially filled it is not like completely filled here it's partially filled so volume of the displacer into what should i say of course g will be there as usual clear so g will be as usual i am following very good right <coughs> so density into pi r square into l into g minus density of the liquid into vd dash what is that vd dash so the volume of the displacer so we have a 
partial volume here so this is the amount that will be actually there right so how do we get that value any one of you please tell me how do we get that volume how do we get only this portion of the volume because this is a cylinder right and its height as i said we will going to start from here so this is considered as a height h correct so this height of this section can be written as pi into first of all area is how much here pi r square is the area here and h is the height so basically the volume of the cylinder is actually nothing but what the area of cross section in the upper area circular area of cross section into height so as we have only this part of the cylinder i have written right pi r square into h and most importantly we will be having g which is called as a acceleration due to gravity now you know everything right so the net weight is now look at that net weight is going to be equal to what so what we can take outside so pi r square we can take outside right and even g we can take outside right so pi r square into g you can take outside so what is left here is rho d into l here minus rho l into h here clear so this is the formula for the net weight right so now you all can see in the net weight formula it's very clear evidence that we have the value of the liquid level correct so h is there so that means the more the value of h if you increase the water level then naturally net weight will going to reduce net weight will going to reduce if the net weight is getting reduced then as i said so this will be going up actually so it is moving in the upward direction so i can say x is going to move in the upward direction so if the weight is reduced then obviously it will move in the upward direction correct so if you use the wiper here wiper will move in the upward direction when the wiper is moving in the upward direction as i said in the potentiometer then the voltage whatever we are getting here is more here clear so that means we all can see water level or the liquid level is the mechanical variable or the physical variable here and we got the electrical output here which is considered as a voltage once we got the voltage then obviously we can convert the voltage back to the standard current of 4 milliampere to 20 milliampere by using voltage to current converter so this is all the concept of displacer now all of you please tell me because at the starting of the lecture most of you told that you haven't heard about the displacer now you should tell me are you clear about the displacer and especially deepak okay especially deepak should tell whether you are clear or not right that's all about the displacer of course the uh, first limitation as i said is it clear or not every one of you yes clear clear right very good very good right right so what is the conclusion deepak it is not about the english or hindi it is about the uh, about, about the concept and more importantly it is about the emotion and never and ever try to feel that uh, you know uh, you can't understand the english because we should not keep that mind of the word like english okay so please remove that uh, barrier from your mind and i'm very sure that once you see the diagram and once you listen to me usually you will be able to understand because many times i feel that the students will have the barrier of the english language trust me english is also a, like a language like n number of languages like hindi telugu tamil and all these things okay don't keep uh, uh, you know don't think that the english is the greatest language so unfortunately we both cannot communicate in a particular language we are using that but never and never overestimate about english your common sense is beyond english so please like, keep that in your mind okay right <laughs> okay okay no issue no issue right so now moving ahead to the next one as i said when it comes to limitations what is the first problem we may face with this one so as i was saying the first is we are actually measuring in the closed tank right so what would be the problem the main problem with this is temperature so the temperature is a problematic variable everywhere okay it not only creates the uh, i mean like problem only in one particular application it creates the problem everywhere so suppose if the temperature changes here right either it may increase or decrease whatever it may be if the temperature changes then the density is will going to change clear density will going to change so if the density changes quite logically and meaningful it is very very meaningful that the density automatically gets changed here and when the density changes you will get the wrong values right so naturally this leads to error here so that means these measurements should be 
very clearly and very protective from the temperature so you need to maintain the temperature constantly and the second problem have you seen here we have two walls and both of these two walls has to be regularly monitored and placed appropriately such that the level of the water here level of the water both should be uh, equal here so that is also a quite challenging task the reason is these walls right usually the stem which is present in the wall that is also temperature sensitive so the stem motion will going to change because of the temperature logically there will be a leakage either here or here that again disturbs here because if there is more leakage here there is a chance <coughs> air flow will be here and that will damage the weight here clear so ultimately what i should say is you have to protect from the temperature variation clear so that's the more important yes reaction of float with the process fluid need maintenance excellent that is also very important right so suppose whatever the process fluid you are taking suppose let us say i have taken sulfuric acid here if you take sulfuric acid here then obviously the material what we are using for the float should be in such a way that it should react it should not react to the process fluid that is also very important good catch very good catch uh, vicky gola nice nice answer now i have a question when you are dealing with the corrosive fluids right so when we are dealing with the corrosive fluid means like sulfuric acid or any acid kind of flu uh, fluids how do we measure the fluid flow rate there we cannot use the capacitive probe right so because anything what you dip there that will get out right in fact that will damage if you are using corrosive fluid how to measure the liquid level now think logically and tell me this is also a very possible interview question okay any one of you any one of you if you have the corrosive fluid how do we measure this so let me continue with my discussion at the end of this lecture i will give you one more technique by using which you will be able to find the uh, liquid level of the corrosive fluids also clear right radiation technique good very good shivani <coughs> right so now as i promised at the starting of the session let me go with another technique called hall sensor technique hall sensor probably easily you will be able to understand so let us take a three dimensional conductor like this assume that we have a three dimensional conductor here like this so let us consider that there is <laughs> it is a three dimensional conductor as you have been seeing continuously from the starting onwards now what we do is side faces look at this because you will not be able to understand the hall sensor without knowing the hall effect okay so there are two side faces here these are the opposite side faces what brilliantly we will do is we will take some <laughs> electrodes here from here and here assume that i am going to take a simple voltage source like this clear so let's consider that this is a voltage source with the series resistance here voltage source plus and minus here right so if that is the case what is the direction of the current first of all the direction of the current will be in this way like this this is the way how the current will be flowing here correct so then obviously the current will be flowing inside like this and then it will be coming out of this one correct so this is the way how the current is coming right so now what happens here is when the current is flowing in this way what is the direction of electron movement so the electron movement will be logically it is in the opposite direction so let us say the electrons are moving in the opposite direction with a great velocity these are electrons actually right so because conventionally the electronic flow uh, electrons flow will be opposite to the direction of current you all know that right so now what brilliantly people do is because we all are engineers right we want to always disturb any process and we will see how it is reacting right so we know that the electron flow is like this electrons are traveling like this and what we do is perpendicular to this if you apply the magnetic field right perpendicular to this if you apply the magnetic field now you can see electrons are flowing from left side face to the right side side face side face i am speaking side face now what i do is i will try to apply the magnetic field from the front face to the back face right so that means like this clear so now i will take a simple uh, you know uh, solid cylinder here see here right so it is a cylinder here correct so what happens is electrons are flowing like this clear electrons are flowing like this right from this side to that side now i am applying the magnetic field perpendicular to this when i apply the magnetic field perpendicular to this then these electrons some of the electrons will try to deviate from the straight line path and they will try to occupy the lower face when the electrons are occupying the lower face opposite you are going to have positive carriers clear positive faces that means 
upper face is positively accumulated, positive charge is accumulated on the upper face, negative charge is accumulated on the lower face. So, is it looking like two metal plates or two faces which are charged, one is positive charge here and second one is negative charge at the bottom. So, is it not looking like a capacitor? Yes or no? Is it not looking like a capacitor or not? Now, forget about everything. We have only positive charge on the upper face here and the negative charge on the lower face. Now, you all can see and easily identify that yes, it is looking like a charged capacitor and if it looks like a charged capacitor, I can say between the upper face and lower face, we will be having the voltage because of the electric field and that voltage is considered as a Hall voltage. Clear? So, this let me say that as VH here. Clear? So, VH is considered as a Hall voltage. Clear? So, now what is Hall effect? So far, I have explained about the definition of the Hall uh, effect here. Right? So, in a simple language, if I ask you a question, what is the Hall effect? Right? So, what you can say here by looking at this? Can I say like this? If a current carrying conductor is placed or exposed to the perpendicular magnetic field, we will be getting the transverse voltage across the device and the voltage which is generated here is called as a Hall voltage. Clear? So, is it clear so far? See, you require about this basis. That's why I discussed all these things. Now, you must tell me whether the concepts are clear or not. Yes, you might be clear about this. Then the immediate question is how well this Hall voltage can be written in terms of the current and magnetic field here. So, VH can be written as Hall coefficient that is KH. Okay, Hall coefficient KH and we have a current that is flowing through the conductor and the magnetic field divided by most importantly the dimension one of the dimension which is called as a thickness right of the conductor here clear so is it clear to all of you so i have explained the hall effect very very fast yes deepak so that is what i am saying kh into i into b by t where i is the current that is flowing through the conductor b is actually called as a magnetic field applied to the conductor perpendicular perpendicularly acting to the current and t is the thickness of the conductor now all of you please tell me hall effect is you know clear or not so if hall effect is clear i will ask a simple question can you think like this right suppose if this value is constant assume that this is constant here right and even the thickness is constant right and the value of the current is constant if the magnetic field that is applied to the sensor if it changes then the voltage will going to change clear so that means if the magnetic field that is applied to the sensor changes then the VH or the Hall voltage will change. What happened to other people? Is it clear or not? Vicky Gola and <coughs> other people. Yes, clear, right? So, that means I can say the Hall voltage developed is directly proportional to the magnetic field. Clear? So, keeping that in the mind, what brilliantly people do is, let us consider there is a tank here and we have the liquid and let us consider that the liquid height is H here. Clear? Liquid height is H. What we do here is, Please try to understand this in this way, right? For example, uh, we are having a magnet and that is floating on this float. Let us consider this as a float here, clear? This is a float. Now you look at this one, right? So the distance between the Hall sensor and the magnet which is floating on the water surface, clear? So this is the distance here. So the magnetic field lines will travel like this and as I was saying that we may be having like a, this is a, you know, three dimensional conductor like this correct so let us consider that this though it was simply mentioned that the hall sensor basically it is a, a three dimensional sensor like this clear so this is the way how it is right this is a three dimensional sensor from the bottom the magnetic field is coming and we will also apply the current to this conductor which is perpendicular to the magnetic field then obviously perpendicular to the direction of current and perpendicular to the magnet there is a chance to get the voltage here vh which is equal to as i said kh into i into b in divided by t so it is not possible for me to show you what is the direction of current otherwise let me take this one so this is what i am speaking here and the, for this if i say this is the hall sensor right so from the bottom the magnetic field is coming right and what i do is i'll try to apply the current uh, you know like this so from this side to this side then from the side faces i will going to get the voltage so basically the voltage which is generated it must be perpendicular to both applied current as well as magnetic field clear that is vh now you all can see one important thing here the magnet is on the float correct float is 
above the water right so let us say this is actually float oh, oh let me take another color right so assume that the float is actually floating on the water here so this is water here all the way right as i was saying from here to here we are calling this as a water level h here correct now can you think one thing here suppose let us say like this because every time we are going to take one common observation here if you look at clearly by chance if i say water level is zero meter so that means if there is no water inside the tank let me say this is an empty tank if i say this is an empty tank okay if i say this is empty tank then magnet will be at bottom almost magnet is at bottom of the tank correct magnet is almost at the bottom of the tank right so if i say the distance from the magnet to the hall sensor so let me say the distance from the magnet to hall sensor as x right so let me call the distance between the magnet and hall sensor as x1 here clear for time being and similarly suppose if the water level is not equal to 0 meter what does it mean if the water level is not equal to 0 meter means let us consider that this is the water level here right so then we can see the magnet is coming near to the hall sensor magnet is coming close to the hall sensor when the magnet is coming close to the hall sensor then i can say magnet is coming close coming close to hall sensor correct so if it is coming close to the hall sensor let me say the distance here is x2 here second case it is a distance x2 it is common sense that in the first case the magnet is almost at the bottom so the distance from the sensor to the magnet is more right but when the water level is increasing magnet is coming close to the sensor because the distance is because of that the distance is reducing right so i can say here from this particular idea x1 will be definitely greater than x2 here clear so now you tell me in which case the magnetic field received by the sensor will be more this is a logical question so please think and tell me in which case the magnetic flux or the magnetic field received by the sensor is more because in the first case when the magnet is at the bottom the distance between the sensor and magnet is more so it takes a lot of effort for the magnetic field to, to, to travel through the air gap and reach to the hall sensor you all know that magnetic flux or magnetic field struggles while it is traveling in the air because the air has a less permeability correct so now you tell me in the first case as the magnet is almost at the bottom the magnetic field cannot reach up to the sensor or else less intensity of the magnetic field will reach to the sensor so therefore logically b1 is less compared to b2 here clear b1 is less compared to b2 if b1 is less compared to b2 now you should tell me what is the final conclusion because already we have concluded that the hall voltage is directly proportional to magnetic field right magnetic field acting on the hall sensor then what will going to happen so naturally the hall voltage which is developed in the first case it will be less compared to the hall voltage that is developed in the second case here clear so easy this is right so that means whenever the water level is increasing i repeat whenever the water level is increasing here magnet will come close 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 to the sensor when the magnet is coming close close to the hall sensor this is a proximity sensor which is recognizing the magnetic field so when the magnet is coming close to the sensor naturally the voltage will going to increase here clear <laughs> so that's very simple technique right so more and more output you will be getting so is it easy so very simple right so but the good thing is because of the height water level is changing the magnetic field that is received to the sensor and because of this magnetic field now the vh voltage that is generated is changing and if we use the v2i converter because of course the vh what we received here will be in the order of microvolt microvolt or millivolt maximum so if it is in the millivolt or microvolt we should amplify this voltage and eliminate the noise and all so once you amplify this we will get a proper voltage and then we have to uh, we need to have a uh, you know uh, so vh has to be amplified to convert this into a big voltage and then we need to use v2i converter to convert everything into the standard current right so ultimately we will try to convert this water level to the current clear and that current should be again the standard current 4 milliampere to 20 milliampere if you are able to do that then this total setup is called as a level transmitter clear level transmitter which is using the hall sensor 
I repeat level uh, transmitter which is using the hall sensor. In previous uh, slides, we have seen the displacer, correct? If it is generating the current, standard current as output like 4 milliampere to 20 milliampere, that would be called as a level transmitter which is using the displacer as a sensor, clear? So that's uh, the overall idea. Now if it's clear, I feel that it's clear only because there is nothing to think more about that, right? But the only disadvantage is what here, right? Again, the temperature. Temperature is the first problem, right? And the second problem is, see the magnetic field is actually traveling like this, right? So it is in the uh, open space. What happens? Because you all might be knowing that Earth, okay? So let me write down here. So Earth, Earth also has a magnetic field, right? So if you are not shielding this device, if you are not shielding this device, I repeat, if you are not shielding this device, then these magnetic field lines or magnetic flux lines or magnetic field will interact with the magnetic field of the earth or else somewhat nearby devices and there will be a lot of uh, corruption will happen clear so whenever we are dealing with the electric field or well i mean like magnetic field we have to shield the devices that's where in the gate syllabus there is a topic called shielding and grounding clear so magnetic shield should be used clear yes that's the idea about this. I hope that is the biggest uh, drawback of this one. But anyway, I hope, I hope you understood this. And have you remembered, I asked one question previously that what happens if the liquid is corrosive? Means if you have something like a, a sulfuric acid or some kind of uh, acid uh, based solution, then many of you have given the answer as like, you know, uh, we will go for the ultrasonic sensor. Yes, we will go to the, go to the ultrasonic sensor. But the problem is, if, if it is an acid, there is always a chance to have the foam. Means foam will going to cover the upper level of the acid. In that case, as I said in the previous lecture also, that ultrasonic uh, level sensors will struggle a lot because of the foam. In that case, we will use a special sensor which is called as a bubbler level gaze. Clear? So it is probably the easiest one I would say. Okay? And uh, most of the people, they don't discuss in the gate syllabus, but let me give this because you will be facing the questions in the interview especially okay so let me say suppose let us take there is a small container here and the water is there okay and we are using the straw here so let me say this is a straw usually we use this straw right uh, to drink the coconut water or else uh, to drink juice right so very small narrow hollow uh, plastic uh, tube here right so this is the straw what we do is so <coughs> yes we can use wiki right so when we are having the straw like this we will dip the straw here clear what we do is we will try to apply the air here right so we will try to pump the air here now we will pump the air here by applying some pressure so because we obviously require to apply uh, you know air will not flow directly into this right we have to apply the pressure when you are drinking the water or when you want to send the air like this we will going to do then only the uh, air will go down right so the air what you are giving here so all the way it will come down come down come down the air molecules will come down come down come down like this come down like this now you tell me when the bubble starts coming out look at that when the bubble starts coming out so bubbles start coming out right air bubbles will be able to come out right suppose if i say the pressure of the fluid at this point let me say the pressure of the fluid at this point as pf clear so uh, let me uh, tell uh, tell me one important fact here you you try to think and tell me when there is a chance here that the bubbles will come out bubbles are nothing but because of the air only right so when the air is coming out here because all the way the air is pressurized from here right so it is all the way it is traveling in the downward direction if the air is coming out here correct then only the bubbles will form correct bubbles will form tell me fundamentally what would be the logic when when i repeat when there is a chance that the bubbles can form there clear so you already applied some pressure here right so let us consider that the pressure of the air here as air pressure as a pa clear let me call this as a pa right tell me when there is a chance that bubbles will form here think think logically so to get the bubbles here the air molecules all the way should travel here, should travel here, should travel here and it will accumulate at the tip here, right? And it should punch this and then come out here, right? And it should punch here and should come out here. When there is a possibility that 
the air molecules will come out from the outer end so this is considered as a end of the straw right end of the straw here any one of you when bubbles will come out here are you able to see the screen properly why no one is answering <coughs> or else any misconnection here right so easy actually to understand this so it's not so difficult so if at all if you apply more air pressure right so if air pressure whatever you are applying if it is greater than the fluid pressure at that point so if i say pressure of the fluid at that point clear pressure of the fluid right right when the air pressure is greater than fluid pressure more pressure is applied very good very good kaushika right so when it is a uh, greater than slightly greater than the fluid pressure at that point right at that point where you dipped actually at the point of end of straw correct then i can say then bubbles will start right so if right then bubbles will start bubble starts coming out clear so the idea is very simple as it is able to generate the bubbles it is called as a double uh, i mean like uh, bubbler level gas bubbler level gas so it is common sense isn't it right now the question is how we can measure the level with this right so i will ask a simple question in the first case in the first case you all can see here very easily that maybe you can uh, take for example right so here this is a h1 right h1 right let us consider this as a fluid one pressure now in the second case you can see the level is more here right so from all the way this is considered as a h2 here from here to here let me call this as a h2 correct so in the second case the end of the straw is here so let me call this as a pf2 here clear and here also let me say first case is, is a air pressure one and in the second case let me take the air pressure as a p a r 2 right so air pressure 2 now tell me in which case in which case i repeat in which case we must apply more pressure to see the bubbles in which case we must apply more amount of the air pressure to see the bubbles i am waiting for your answer so please let me know i know that there is a delay here so please let me know in which case we need to apply more amount of the uh, air pressure to see the bubbles coming out of the end tip of the straw. Anyone of you? Second case, right? So, this is such an easy question, right? Why only three people are answering? Where are the other people so fast? Everyone, this is the last technique what we are going to discuss. So, I want your full energy here. Please keep your answers in the comment box that will give energy for me next five minutes. Okay, right. Second case. So in second case, you will be able to see that more amount of air pressure should be applied. Correct. Then only we will be able to see the bubbles here. Correct. So can I say like this? If, if the level is increased, if the liquid level is increased, then we require more amount of the air pressure. Correct. We require more amount of the air pressure to generate the bubbles to generate the bubbles here correct generate bubbles right so to generate the bubbles now the question is what we do is suppose let us say in the first case right in the first case i will fix this one let's assume that for example in the first case if i say uh, water level in the first case is like a 10 centimeter for example it is a 10 centimeter here and at that time i required a pressure in the first case you can consider like i require like a, a 10 psi or 10 pascal pressure for example example i am taking don't argue with me these numbers okay example i am taking now in the second case assume that the liquid level is high right so here assume that i have monitored this pressure i have monitored this pressure tell me this air pressure is more or less compared to 10 pascals it's obvious choice that it will be more than 10 pascals maybe assume that i have like 20 pascals here right 20 pascals here now quickly answer me if there is no drawbacks here and there are no losses here what would be the value of the height here this is a straight linear relation correct what would be the level don't do any calculation use your common sense and tell me that i am saying that definitely there are no losses here so in that case when the pressure required is more 
then obviously the depth of the water might be more right so now i'm asking what would be the conclusion of the h2 first conclusion everyone can say that h2 is greater than h1 clear h2 is greater than h1 right so that's it and suppose if i have a linear relation all right if you if i have a proper linear relation of first order as we required here 20 pascal which is a double than the first one then i can say h2 might be equal to right if i have a linear relation of first order with a constant one then h2 would be straight away equal to two times of the h1 here and which will be equal to 20 centimeter clear so this is how exactly we can easily measure the level here clear so yeah, very good very good kaushika so this is uh, this will happen if you have a linear relationship of course if we, we will be having the linear relationship only because the bubbles will start coming out if the air pressure is equal to air pressure is slightly greater than or equal to uh, the fluid pressure at that point correct so fluid pressure at that point would be written as what so if i say instead of h1 and h2 and all this nonsense here suppose if i go to the next one right so this is the way how the structure actually the real time instrumentation will be like this now you can see here we are having the air supply air supply air gas and the fluid flow rate will be measured by the rotameter or the regulator here so we will maintain the constant fluid of the air supply otherwise the volume of the fluid will change right so we have to maintain constant constant uh, air flow clear that's why we require the regulator clear so regulator is used to maintain the flow rate constant right and you can see there is a pressure gauge here right and what it will measure is this pressure gauge will measure the pressure of the air molecules so we have applied the pressure here right so p a i r air molecules pressure and this value will be measured by this one clear pressure level gauge have you seen how they made this statement pressure level gauge that means actually you are going to measure the pressure of the air and from there the calibration will be on the level clear so that means you will measure the value of the pressure only but that will be converted to level that's what it was um, it is meaning of right so now as i was saying that the air molecules all the way it will come here like this like this like this right so now at the end here the air molecules will have some pressure and that pressure must be more than the liquid suppose if i say this is the height right so at this point the fluid pressure is pf if i say right and let us say the air molecule pressure here so if i say this is a p air plus some extra pressure if it is having because from here to here we are having the air flow light right directly right so then i can say whatever the pressure of the air molecule that we see here especially right so that let me say p here so then i can say very confidently here that the pressure of the air molecules here if i call this as a p that must be that p must be okay so greater than or equal to pf to get the bubbles right so let me write down to get bubbles we must use this one right so that means it should be like a row uh, f fluid into g into h where h is the height or the level of the uh, liquid in the tank clear now we can all the way see that so because if you are able to calculate this pressure correct so by using the pressure gauge here then obviously we will be able to correlate this with the liquid level here clear that is how we will be seeing balu desai good class sir thank you thank you very much balu right so this is exactly the way how we will be using the bubble uh, bubbler level gauge to measure the liquid level clear so i hope i have done with the session today so i have explained all the concepts whatever is required uh, not only for the gate examination even we have gone one step beyond the gate examination because usually in the gate syllabus we won't deal with the bubbler we don't deal with the piezometer and all this stuff but as i have taken the monsoon special series as a special program i myself came up with the different different techniques to show you how we will measure the level in different different situations i have explained how to measure the level in the ground water i have explained how to measure the level of the liquid in the closed container i have explained how to measure the liquid level in open container i have explained how to measure the liquid level in difficult situation i also explained how do we measure the liquid level in when the liquid is corrosive and i have explained if the liquid has a mud particles what to do if the liquid is a clean then what to do and not only that we have even seen how we can measure the liquid level especially not liquid level granules level right so by using the radiation technique 
all these concepts i have explained decently well enough so far right so as i was saying clearly again and again the next session depends on you okay if you people requires any of the special attention in the instrumentation or if you are not clear with some of the topics or if you want more topics to be discussed or you want to be uh, discuss i mean you want some special topics to be discussed again i am requesting that please put that topic name in the comment section we'll try to prepare a, a schedule and that schedule will be informed to you in the telegram group and those people who want to join in the telegram group directly you can mail me or else directly you can message me i will add you in the telegram group so that you will going to get the regular updates related to the schedule clear so <laughs> oh deepak thank you thank you very much both emotional hoya right so love you from north india sir okay so <laughs> great very happy to see the comments from your side right overall industrial instrumentation please shivani sharma overall industrial instrumentation will take almost around more than 120 hours i deal overall instrumentation more than 120 almost 150 hours nearly right so it's not possible so whenever you want because i feel that you people require some basics in different different uh, topics so let us deal some peculiar topics where you will not get any material okay so that we can use this schedule we can use the opportunity of the live classes more efficiently so there are some concepts like rtd and dermister you will be getting here and there the material is available even my notes is available my recorded classes are available so that you can use but the more importance should be given to this level measurement pressure measurement and flow measurement okay that's why i came up with this schedule i hope right so you all really uh, got the complete idea about that again i am requesting every one of you please follow the regular updates regarding the upcoming schedule in the telegram group so that we both can enjoy the beauty of learning of industrial instrumentation love the subject definitely the subject will take you to the futuristic level clear so well this is really a very good journey so far we have all the way we have discussed nearly around six lectures right so i have discussed so many concepts in the manso special series if you have any doubts please post the doubt in the comment box otherwise you can directly post the doubt in the whatsapp uh, or else in the telegram group i am always available to give the reply to you okay once again thanks to every one of you so let's enjoy the beauty of learning instrumentation together thank you very much